Welcome to my No Man's Sky survival series and I'm recording this straight after part one guys because I do want to keep the flow going for this initial part of the series and in the first part we did the initial survival we had a couple of close scrapes and we got as far in the in online tutorial as getting up into space but we've made a minor diversion to actually get up here and check out the space station partly because I want to sell off those Albion pearls I, I don't know whether we can send these to our exosuit so we can sell them I don't know if it makes any difference and the other thing I also want to do is just check out around here and I also want to change my avatar so that's what we're going to do and I'm just going to grab this grab some of these resources we're getting some cobalt now is going to be quite useful and obviously we're going to get into here and going to sell the album pearls if I can find them there we are we're going to make 54,000 the fact it's in red says that it's a bad price because it's minus 3.9 but to be honest at the moment I couldn't care less and I don't think I want to sell off anything else can we buy anything that's going to give me a bit of an edge which is what I'm more interested in I could certainly do with some oxygen I think maybe if we get about get about 150 oxygen because oxygen has been a bit of a pain in the neck on the planet that I've just been on now that could all change because we're just going to go to a different planet how about the sodium uh, how, how are we for sodium now we've got 171 sodium we've got plenty of oxygen now I don't think we actually need anything else Let's sort that out we've got some ferrite dust and um, this is one of the reasons why I actually grabbed the Albium pearls in the last part just so that we could actually do it. oxygen capsules unstable plan now I don't think we actually need anything else I mean I've got no nanites at all and there's no point going down here because get into here we will need an Atlas V1 pass and that's a little bit way down the road for the moment but what we will do is have a chat with these guys and see if we go I'm not going to really I don't really want any missions for them uh, what I want to do is actually just work on my long-term goals thanking with organic carbon fair I dust I think we're thanking with carbon Trader nods a brief thank you and they pay for my contribution and perhaps we preferred something else. Well, we got some credits from them. Ah. Um, okay, we'll give him some sodium. Flicks the beak. And we got another 1000 and we get the Gek word for give. Now, the reason why I'm talking to these guys is we've got the milestones here and these milestones aren't difficult these are like ways of tracking your progress but they do tie into the Nadra and Polo mission that will be coming up sometime in the future and uh, so I've got no nanite survey and I've got four so it's a waste of time talking to these guys there's only guys who are new to the game what you do is the, you can get tech from these guys and it says here trade there but you can see everything is priced in nanites and this is where you get your more advanced tech from but we're not going to worry about that and uh, what I'm hoping for is well I think this guy also has nanites so, and talking to the actual traders doesn't count towards your milestones but what I am hoping for is that I'd be able to get this and I'm hoping is I'm going to be able to afford this 50,000 yeah and this is another reason why I wanted to get up in the trading station now your initial purchases want to be in this extended area not the actual main boss suit because just to show you guys if I come into here if I now come into if I now transfer the carbon to the there and we go here you can now store 500 carbon in there so so every slot you buy in this cargo area is worth two slots on here so this is why your first upgrade and probably your second upgrade if you got the cash for it should be the actual that here 
and the other thing I am going to do this may break the inline tutorial but we're going to go here now I've mentioned this before is I'm, I'm a bit of a traveler fan and I actually quite like that actually <laughs> um, yeah I think maybe we will go that uh, okay oh wow that's weird I think that's even a bit too much for me oh that's not too bad it's got a slightly cute look to it that's got an almost feline type look to it I actually quite like that actually <laughs> I mean I probably will be changing this as we go along I, I mean I'm not gonna do it's actually um, I actually quite like that our armor that's probably looks a bit chunky yeah I think maybe we will stick with that gloves I mean I'm not gonna that fits with that patch there so maybe we'll stick with that with the gloves actually I think that fits quite well let's have a look at the other styles now that doesn't fit I actually quite like that with the legs boots boots actually are fairly in keeping that's got it's a bit like my current boots a bit scruffy I actually quite like that and the, the actual backpack doesn't really change that much it's more a color change I think we'll just stick with that okay yes and just to give you guys a bit of a view of it and what we actually look like if we ever meet anyone else roving around the planet now I'm gonna, gonna be honest guys I don't like this mode as an avatar I see a lot of people playing like this it doesn't feel intuitively right maybe I've played No Man's Sky too long in first person I don't mind third person when I'm flying the ship but I just don't feel it guys so what we're gonna do is just flip back to uh, first person this is the more intuitive mode which I've I've got used to and I feel most comfortable playing I also feel that in the higher levels of the game like survival mode this improves your chances of survival because you've got you, you've got more accuracy in when you're actually out collecting resources I find it's sometimes it's quite difficult to actually government resources in third person and what I'm doing at the moment is just talking to these guys and, and of course we're paying them 10 credits because the Gex love credits and they for teaching them their language so this is a quick early win from actually doing it I mean I don't want any of these guys to actually give us a mission so we're just going to uh, put me in tasks that may require their help no um, I don't want to be sidetracked just at the moment with a mission and of course I don't understand what he's doing Dolphins boats entire facility yeah I, I don't want to get into side missions until I've I've got through the first part of the actual uh, in-game tutorial yeah. breathing can only assume that they're supposed to be make me feel welcome yeah. okay and I'm not going to ask for directions either Dir when you ask for directions it gives you a location down on a planet and again that might actually just be a bit of a distraction now again if you're really lucky guys and start in a system with uh, the Keens there's a good chance of actually getting a multi-tool upgrade when you first talk to these guys and that is certainly worth going Right, so we've now got a journey milestone. It's probably to do with the number of aliens I've met. Oh no, I've learnt five words. And now this trading terminal should give be offering me exactly the same as I had before. Um I'm kind of a bit tempted to buy a little bit of sodium, compensate for the sodium I've got. Now these guys will offer you missions but at the moment we're too low level so they won't offer us any missions at all 
so there's no point talking to them I'm not seeing any cubes in here or anything I was hoping to pick up some cubes it's a bit of a disappointment maybe and this teleporter is not active it doesn't you've got to do so many warps to get it so it'll just tell us there very politely that we were not there so we're not, I'm not actually seeing any cubes I was a bit disappointed here guys anyway I think it's time now to actually get back to the main mission I'm just going to drop a save because the next bit is going to be a little bit risky in the sense that we're going to have to fly through space and we will be pro yeah a bounty ship on it we're game we're just going to ignore him and we're just going to before we what I want to do is send that bounty ships around I want to get a bit of tritium close to this space station for the moment just in case we get bounced I just want to make sure I've got enough tritium to actually do the jump because the last thing I want to do is actually run out of uh, tritium on the way in we are getting some silver I don't really want the silver although silver is quite important for building your freighter bases guys and we're going to tag it actually the ancient ruin whatever it is that we picked up in the last part is actually on the same planet so we're 19 seconds out we should be okay once you get below about 30 seconds if the you see on the bottom left there the circle if that starts to fill in that's your warning that pirates or yeah wow hey you're cheating game we should be okay guys we'll be in the atmosphere yeah hostile space game I don't know if that was scripted guys but that circle in the bottom left should have filled up telling us that someone was scanning us and give us advance warning of pirates so we come down here and it looks like we've actually got a freighter there now I could be cheeky and actually land on the freighter um, yeah I'm very tempted because that would give us the free takeoff see what type of hostile planet we're actually on right we're on a toxic planet now and we're 756 uh, we should be okay guys we can always summon our ship wow that's going down really quickly there's some sodium there a little bit of sodium see the difference guys oops we've got a dancing pineapple on this toxic planet there's a lot more sodium and that turns back to the theme that I was talking about in the in the first part guys what you get on as a starting resources on the planet will depend very much on the planet type of where you land on so different planet types have different advantages and disadvantages you can see here I've, I've probably picked up more sodium there's something near me making noises but I've pick, probably picked up more actual resources here right it's a small source distance 535 yeah we'll be okay guys look you can see here the sodium but in contrast there is less carbon around see if I actually show you that I mean there's a tree over there maybe landing on the freighter wasn't such a good idea but we'll be okay guys I say with this amount of sodium around yeah see look we've got another two lots of sodium actually might as well take advantage and scan and of course I've made a mistake there straight away guys in the sense that I'm I should mark come and it's a sentinel coming in which is a pain in the neck okay it's gonna grab that sodium rich planet plant planet
And here's the signal source. Of course, we get some super condensed carbon. And this is the random actual machinery that it needs that wants us to talk to. Or broken technology, as it's actually called. 161616 16, 16, log entry. The sparkling wires of the machine generate a signal tapping out the broadcast of the void wherever. Whoever left this message is long gone. Decipher signal. Uh, entry, no fuel, failed to reach station, hazard protection low, no choice but to go but to underground deploy base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains a plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. Okay, download the plans. So we've now got a terrain manipulator. We've got uh, we need dihydrogenated jelly and I think what we're going to do is uh, can't remember what we actually need I've forgotten already guys so we need two nanite tubes but well, we got loads of carbon so oops. so we're going to make two of these and got any dihydrogenated jelly so we actually need some dihydrogen I think what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to make my way back to my ship if I can actually find it. Uh, we're going to grab this first. Oh there's some uh, dihydrogen. Yeah, we'll be okay. Um, of oxygen. Right, where's my ship? Where ship? Where did you go? There it is there. Right, looks like there's some more sodium over there. Right. Uh, make some and of course what we're going to do is come in here and put the train manipulator down. This is gather copper. So what we're going to do is have a look round for some copper. That's a salt deposit. Yeah. Right, it says there's a copper deposit that way. I'd rather have a copper deposit on the way back to my ship. It's this way. Right, we're going to tag that that way. Yeah, we're, we're okay. And we're going to go that way. There's some sodium up on the edge there. Yes, yeah, stop nagging me, woman. And of course, now we've got the terrain manipulator. If a storm comes, we can actually go underground. Yeah, this is plenty of sodium there. Oxygen is still an issue. So. Scan that. Ammonia. Okay, I'll we'll take some ammonia. Don't know what it's good for. Oh, go away. Sentinels are a real pain in the neck, to be honest, guys. Right, let's head for the copper deposit. Yeah, the copper deposit is really nice and close to the actual uh, freighter. So maybe that wasn't such a bad decision to, to actually work next near the freighter. And it looks like there's a, a cut some oxygen plants in here as well. Actually, we've got quite a nice crop of oxygen. Wow. Right. I think we cracked the oxygen problem, guys. This is a bit reminiscent. If any of you guys have played No Man's Sky for a long time, you may remember the old, um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember what they were called now. 
there were planets that had no bases or anything like that on it and but they used to have these great big crops of thamium like this which would actually do it to fill that in yeah and you could literally pick up enough thamium in one go to last you for a very very long time a bit like i've just done with the oxygen here that was a very very big find and wow well, no it's actually giving me a, a bonus there I've got a bit more and i think we're just going to keep walking here we, we got the yeah we got loads of sodium we're out of the woods from the perspective of sodium so and there's a little bit of dihydrogen there i was a bit low on that See that sentinel the moment i fired at it that stuff there he was on me now this is going to make life a little bit interesting with respect to mining the copper because as soon as i actually hit anything i mean hopefully he won't follow me i mean that's one of the annoying things of sentinels is that they seem to just follow you everywhere yeah Anyway, we're just going to keep walking. Actually, got the oxygen now. We can just leg it a little bit and let it build up a little bit. Right, wow. I'm starting to like this planet. I mean, I could build a base on this planet. Uh, I mean, it may be toxic, but these clumps of resources like this around were, were really cooking guys in fact with this amount of resources I, I can have the opposite problem I may be actually starting to run out of space and of course what you can't do anymore is send stuff to the ship so what I'm gonna do is just grab that and see how much space we got and we got enough to mine the amount of copper that we need yes right That was really, really great. Well, we need 80 copper. Stop nagging me. I wish there was a way you could set set the game so that it would, wouldn't start telling you that until you got to about 75% or 50% because it starts to get quite irritating after a while to be told that it's falling when it's already falling. And I think what we can do is just going to get straight onto the terrain map manipulator and just going to grab the cop the copper now one thing you've got to be a bit careful with the train manipulator is if i go up here it will it will go outside of the resource so again if any of you guys remember playing before that if you were actually excavating a resource like this you could just whack around with the old mining tool and the mining tool would only mine the resource it would ignore the terrain because it it couldn't actually destroy the terrain but now with the terrain manipulator it will actually you can waste energy wow that's out of power already okay uh, i think although i think i've got enough to uh i think we'll use some pure ferrite just going to pick up the rest of this copper one thing i do uh, one thing i have noticed guys is though that compared to the old mining system the ter the terrain manipulator even though it runs out of resources very very quickly it does actually seem to be a bit more efficient let's grab some more sodium because we're gonna uh well we can need to charge that up straight away and we're gonna charge up our shields and and get back to the freighter i think we're just get some you know, I don't need you, but I'm just killing you on principle. I actually got you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, probably actually need the carbon, so let's just mine out this carbon. Seeing the resources have flipped the other way now. And. 
right this is the can I get I should be able to use the jetpack to actually thank you uh, we'll be okay and this is it process copper and create chromic metal yeah well what we're going to do is just jump into the ship for a, a few minutes, regenerate our environmental protection and recharge the oxygen. Yeah, we've got so much oxygen. And I think what I'm actually going to do is transfer some oxygen to the ship and how, how are we doing for sodium? Yeah, that'd be part of my backup reserve. So this is tidy up the inventory. I can go to the ship. I'm going to put some sodium onto the starship as well in case I get killed. Um, a little bit low on carbon, but then again, I uh, don't deceive me, guys, because we got 329 in here, and that's something you've got to get used to, guys. The fact that you've got the extra capacity, and you need to remember that it's there. Oops, nope. Uh, just deploy the uh, little gizmo here. It says ship inside. Thank you. And we've got to put uh, transfer some copper in and find it. There's the copper and put the carbon in. We're going to make the chromic metal. While well, that's trundling away, I want to show you here. Now, there's a good chance we may not be able to unlock everything in this crater because you do need special resources. Now, once it was just a question of doing this, but now got here, yeah, you need chromic metal, magnetized ferro, and cobalt. So, so once freighters used to be quite a good, easy source of elements, but it's not quite so straightforward now. And I think we can just try a scan, see what's around. It's interesting. I suppose that's because I've probably picked that one there. Uh, okay, let's just get back into the ship. I don't want to wander off too far. The other thing we can do before I actually do this is if we come here. Uh, just do the freighter as well at it log extraction complete read log uh, life goes on day after day delivering after I hope to go home soon the life is not one for me multiple sentinel energy signatures detecting requiring immediate dropping out of warp there they're there sentinels what are they doing fighting each other the sentinel ships are engaging each other ignoring us for now sentinels appear to have departed distress signals nearby broadcasting 16 on repeat I'm going to take a look and we don't get anything from that it's effectively telling you to salvage the the freighter and just to show you guys uh, come here actually it's obviously not giving us secondary missions at the moment okay I don't care I think that should be it and we can now come here and we'll transfer this to the exosuit and base computer claim the site for construction and find a suitable area to deploy now there's a good chance that I'm not going to be able to build the base in this area because we're actually inside of a freighter area so wow it says I can actually deploy my base next to the freighter now that is going to be very useful guys because that gives me an instantaneous re takeoff and landing so we're certainly going to go with this and um, yeah that was a it's the base computer wow okay I'm getting distracted here guys yeah I mean that is really really great the fact that I, I've, I've actually got being able to build my base next to a this situation Right, the environment's now built up, and it says now we've got to use the base computer. 
I was just going to come over here. And I was going to click on here. Searching cartographic archives. Universal archive search reveals no prior claims on this site. Sonar test confirms the site is suitable for construction. Claim base. So we've now claimed the base. Right next to a freighter. I think that's really cool, guys. I like that idea. Because if I stay in near this system, I can always come back and loot the freight of Basic computer on search, basic computer archives, uh, use terminal with E. Okay. Accessing log from previous UNO. Entry follows. Storm sweeping across, but construction supplies are low. Depositing shelter plans will need to back be back soon. Download plans. Now these are the absolute basics of 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 base. And it says construct a shelter. So what we're going to do is create a very simple shelter. And sim simple is probably the word. Now there's there's two white reasons for actually building this actual shelter. And that is that once you've actually got a shelter up and running, actually let's put there. And we're going to quite literally have uh, put four walls. It, this will give you a place to hide from hostile sentinels and again I think this storm is actually scripted guys base computer log update return to base computer yep and what you've got now is a little place to hide should you aggravate the sentinels if you get in here the sentinels won't find you and you can actually get away with it so it's going to talk to the base computer Accessing log from previous user, additional archives recovered. Entry follows. Construction largely successful. Recover salvage technology from nearby. Plans log. Scan indicate additional subterranean devices beginning search. Sub Download plans. Whoever recorded these logs evidently had some success. I have access to their plans. Perhaps they can learn from I can learn from their efforts. So we actually need magnetized ferrite and carbonized tubes. So we're just gonna pop in here because obviously the storm's going on yeah place pure ferrite in I don't don't think I've got any more pure ferrite and I so I'm gonna have to get some ferrite uh, I don't know we're gonna need to actually mine some ferrite we got some chromic metal got loads of oxygen probably gonna dump that uh, frost crystal one frost crystal was a complete waste of space not here we've got salt I like to keep the salt salt is quite valuable as you can see they've already got 15 units of it the silver we will need for building a freighter base oh we got pure fair right here so I can actually put that oh no starship out of range I can see it game I can see it okay let's just should be able to leg it over to the starship <laughs> Thank you, game. Right, let's transfer this. And I have to watch my carbon because my carbon is probably getting a low now. Yeah, we're down to 43 carbon. That's going to be an issue. So what we can do is transfer this, put that in. We'll let that make some magnetized and we have to see if we can go and find some carbon. there's some trees and stuff over this way I'm gonna go out this way hopefully uh, mr. sentinel will not actually bug us and I'm out and as I say we got the protection so we're okay guys uh, I'm gonna analyze that for the secondary resource fungal mold well I don't really need fungal mold but I suppose we can grab it of course I'm consuming the carbon in my multi-tool so it looks like that might have regenerated already okay unidentified scan this that's this like this is just simply carbon it's okay we'll take it And we 
I'll just grab sodium. I mean, this is another way to actually recharge, guys, and I must admit, I'm, I actually prefer to go into the inventory. As you can see there, I've, I thought I'd recharged and I hadn't. I don't know why I actually recharged with that. I must admit, I, I just prefer going directly into the inventory. I think what we're just going to do is grab this, mine out this. I think if we grab these, the Sentinel's not around, which is good. I think we get another one. That's getting loads and loads of carbon, which is exactly what I want. So we can replenish what's actually in the uh, cargo area. I think one more for luck. And that should be it, guys. We're going to need to recharge the multi tool. Uh, let's actually scan that. Let's see what we got here, see if there's anything really good. Uh, let's just take this as well while we're looking at it. Uh, we should be able to get back to the ship. trot on will be okay guys and just stop before we actually get exhausted as it builds up quicker and we're just gonna drop into the ship and recharge this blueprint analyzer requires magnetized ferrite. Collect magnetized ferrite from the refiner. Yes, okay. And while we're at it, we might as well recharge our oxygen. This can go into the high capacity. How are we doing? 293. And this can go into the high capacity as well. We're back to 478 carbon. That's really good. Uh, Ammonium, right, I'm going to dump that as well. Yep. Gold, silver. Right. Should now be able to just transfer this to the exocraft. And got now gather carbon from plants, craft a nanotube. Isn't this fun? And so now deploy the blueprint analyzer well we'll just shove the blueprint analyzer out here that's the blueprint analyzer okay I must be it despite playing quite a few hours since the next update I'll still get taking a little while to get used to the different things diagnostic suggestion should I recover buried technology from the dig sites equipment utilizer and analyzer via okay blueprint research So in order to do this, we actually need this area here. What I would like to do is get enough build a base teleporter that I'm not sure that it's actually going to work, but I think having a base teleporter here could be useful, but then we've got the free takeoff and landing. And the save point could be useful. Right guys, I think now we've got the blueprint analyzer built. Yeah, this is where I'm going to leave it, guys. In the next part, we will go out and find the buried technology and move the in-game in tutorial forward. What I might do off-camera is go out and maybe check the area out and get some additional resources because I do like to have plenty of there because we, what we do need is some more actual... the here, so we actually we could make a metal plating and build another one of these. I mean, I do like to have spares of these around, and I don't know how much other oxygen we've got. Uh, Deuterium dioxygen. We need some more di, di, uh, hydrogen to make fuel. Anyway, this is where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting. Feel free to add comments and suggestions and ask questions. I'll be happy to answer them. 
So until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.